Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum and a very good evening to you all. This is Talk Motives and my name is Mohammed Afra. Uh, my guests this evening are Health Minister Irdusham Adam and Environment Minister Mr. Thorik Ibrahim. First of all, first of all, let me just uh, wish you a very happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, can we start with a little background about? Let, let, let's start with Irdusham. Well, uh, I assume office uh, last year in May. Uh, and uh, since then, I have been working on uh, President's uh, manifesto goals. I was formerly uh, ambassador in Geneva with other diplomatic titles, uh, had a career in the Foreign Service. Mr. Tori? Yeah. Um, I was appointed as the Minister for Environment and Energy uh, oh, two years back uh, when first when, uh, President Yamin just came to power after a few days. He came to power. And since then, I have been the Minister for Environment and Energy. But uh, I, I, my background is uh, I'm a mechanical and electrical engineer. I have been practicing as a mechanical and electrical engineer uh, all throughout. And uh, I have a bit of background working abroad as well. So that's basically who I am. And now, as the Minister of Environment and Energy, uh, I'm. I'm mandated to do uh, the work of environment related most of the environment related work energy related work and also the climate change and uh, coastal protection work as well Mr. Shama, can you tell us about the government's uh, health policy and and what what are the policy goals of the government what what is it trying to achieve well, uh, as uh, the national health goal, goal or the policies that have been uh, drawn up is President Yamin's uh, manifesto goals. Uh, almost uh, 21 uh, of uh, the manifesto goals lie within the health sector. And I think the pres uh, president has underlined uh, that health service is important. Uh, the policy uh, overview, if you highlight it, is to provide accessible, affordable, and essential health services to all Maldivian citizens, irrespective of which atoll, which island, wherever you are, that health service should be extended and it will be service to the people. So this is uh, actually the overview and also the, the uh, target. Whereas uh, specific national health uh, aspects lies, it is also making sure that the uh, essential uh, or basic uh, constitutional health services are provided to the people, which means the uh, necessary medical treatment uh, with uh, doctors in hospitals and health centers, uh, and how it is managed in such a way that all the required specialties will be provided from the atoll or regional hospitals, and uh, any specialty that is developed within the IGMH or any tertiary hospital that will also provide in services so that people uh, ha people can have confidence and also get the treatment from the Maldives. The other uh, main uh, issue that the president has highlighted in his manifesto goals is making sure that there is a transport facility uh, by uh, land uh, that ambulances are provided to all at all so that people get uh, these services and uh, see ambulances so that if there is any ever Equation, that the patients will be uh, sent uh, to the various hospitals uh, and evacuated very promptly. There is also a, a number of uh, key aspects, building the capacity of the health sector, promoting uh, health uh, values within uh, the government, within the Maldives, promoting public health, uh, and also uh, preventive care is underlined as a very important target. The other service is making sure that uh, doctors Doctors and the medical personnel uh, are there for every family or every individual, which means that whichever uh, program that is underlined, the services will be ex extended to the people. If it is a specialty, super specialty is provided with outreach programs. So either they are stationed in hospitals or there is an outreach program where the specialty is not available at that moment. There's also uh, specific uh, goals that 
uh, provide, provide uh, training programs, building uh, capacity so that Maldivian doctors, Maldivian medical uh, personnel or health uh, professionals actually service to the uh, Maldivians. This is, this is also underlined. There's also uh, specific goals, improving the services, um, which also means that providing the essential medical equipment, the facilities to be improved uh, all over Mali, uh, all over the, uh, the Maldives, and also providing uh, the necessary medical uh, medicines that will be regulated by the health ministry, which will be quality uh, monitored and essential services are provided to the people as and when it is required. There's also a specific goal that underlines uh, under the thalassemia bill that all Maldivians thalassemia children or uh, thalassemia uh, individuals will be provided uh, with the necessary medication, the thalassemia screening, and uh, government will provide these services without any change. Charge. So this has been also conducted and continued. Health screening for uh, children uh, and also treatments are given as and when required. Uh, adolescence health screening, all these fall under the uh, health uh, manifesto goals. Thorik, our environment is one of the most fragile in the world. What are your concerns and also tell us about uh, the government's environmental policy? Indeed, uh, uh, our environment is one of the most fragile environments in the world. If you look at our reef systems, um, uh, it's one of the largest reef systems in the world. And if you look at the species, uh, coral species, we have about more than 300 different type of coral species within the within our reefs. So, if you even if, if that's that's how uh, important our our uh, environment is for our economy as well. Um, uh, to keep uh, the, our coral reefs intact and to keep it for our future generations as it is is something that is uh, uh, of concern and uh, with our developments uh, which is going on in Maldives we need to make sure that the uh, our environment our coral reef systems is uh, kept as far as possible without damaging or have the impacts minimized uh, to make sure that the coral reef system lives, uh, uh, make sure that this system, coral reef system is uh, 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 kept intact for our future generation. As you know, uh, uh, our environment, especially our, our reef system is one of the, one of the major uh, uh, system for our economy because our our economy is based on our uh, environment, especially the tourism and the fishing is uh, uh, is uh, dependent on our environment, uh, uh, so our reef system. If you look at uh, our reef system, uh, our bait fishing. If you look at the fisheries, our bait fishing depends on our reef, and if the reef uh, is dead, then there will not be no more uh, bait fishing, which will uh, reflect uh, our major fishing industry, uh, the tuna fishing industry. And then the similarly, uh, our diving, our tourists come to Maldives for our, our reefs to look at, look at the beauty of our reefs, to look at the beauty of our beaches. So this whole thing, all, all of our economy depends on our, our environment, especially our reef system and the, our uh, undersea world. So we need to make sure that this uh, environment, our, this fragile environment is kept alive and kept alive for our future generation and, uh, it, and it needs to be kept for our uh, economic reasons as well. Um, what, ste what steps have been taken to address some of the environmental challenges we face, uh, including tidal surges and uh, coastal erosion? Uh, first of all, uh, let me tell you that uh, uh, whatever uh, whatever projects or whatever infrastructure that is done within Maldives, uh, any of the island, be it uh, uh, construction of a resort or be it construction of a harbour in a local island, uh, there is a rigorous environmental impact assessment done before the project starts and to make sure uh, to find out what are the impacts of that structure or that, that project to the environment and how you can minimize the effect of environment effect 
uh, to the environment. So uh, these are studied uh, before the project starts and it is monitored during the project as well and then after the project to see how how the, the impacts are. So any project that is done, major project that is done on Maldives, there is a rigorous environmental impact assessment done. So it's just to make sure that uh, our uh, environment is kept safe and kept uh, uh, with in intact and make sure it does not harm uh, in a major way to the environment, rest of the environment. And as you have just mentioned, uh, coastal protection and tidal surges are some of the um, uh, issues that we are facing at the moment uh, uh, due to um, uh, uh, due to the construction of uh, of. Uh, due to the construction of um, uh, other infrastructures within the island like the harbour and also partly due to the change in our weather patterns, change in our climate, uh, uh, the coastal protect, coastal erosion is happening. Uh, last year alone we have, uh, there are about 70 islands reported uh, coastal protection, coastal erosion issues and uh, uh, during certain time of the year we are getting, we, we have reports that the uh, tidal surges are uh, bashing the islands and inundating, inundating the islands and uh, so we need to make sure that these uh, coastal erosions are stopped and the tidal waves are, uh, uh, tidal waves minimize the effects of tidal waves uh, that is uh, causing the, 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 the damages causing the, from the tidal waves are minimized. So uh, there is a, uh, uh, there's a, uh, Extensive projects have been, uh, coastal protection projects have been now undertaken by this government. Last year alone, we have completed three three kilometers of uh, coastal protection in several islands, and uh, there are ongoing another seven kilometers of coastal protection in several islands. So altogether, last uh, year we have uh, contracted an ongoing 10 kilometers of coastal uh, protection uh, uh, works within several islands. So mm -hmm. this is to make sure that the islands are kept kept safe and the um, the uh, islands are protected from higher tidal waves in order to protect the people from the of the island, of those islands from these effects of erosion so that's what we are doing at the moment and uh, hopefully in the future even this year next this year's budget we have several more islands to be protected uh, from the coastal erosion um, if the Shang, what, what is the current state of our health care system in the country and, and how does the World Health Organization see, see our country? Well, as you saw uh, during the 50 years anniversary of the Maldives membership in WHO and Maldives was awarded as one of the first countries with the malaria certification that we have eradicated malaria. Uh, I think this is a success. Uh, it speaks itself as well. Uh, apart from that, uh, WHO has from time to time uh, reported that the Maldives have improved its health service uh, two or three folds uh, higher than any other country, even within the region, uh, compared to a developing country. The health system currently is very dynamic. A uh, lot of reforms, as you see, uh, unlike any other uh, country, with uh, the, the facilities improved, the health personnel uh, has also improved. The specialties that have developed the means of providing health service has also been reformed. So this has been uh, actually facilitated and implemented under the visionary leader of President Yamin Abdul Gayum. Uh, this has been reported in our uh, regional ministerial meetings. Uh, recently we attended the Timor Leste ministerial meeting of WHO. The Maldives has also served as executive member uh, in the WHO, also chaired as, uh, as has been the chairman uh, of the executive board, uh, vice chairperson in the 
uh, executive board. These are successes for a very small country. Modis is one of the smallest countries. And uh, given the challenges uh, that is inherent in the geography of the country, providing health for, uh, facilities due to the environment and climate change uh, effects, uh, as well as uh, disaster uh, prone areas, it's very difficult for a country like Maldives. So the risk reduction that uh, arrangements that have been in place for the uh, Maldives since uh, tsunami that has also really improved. Uh, this was highlighted by uh, WHO in their reports. The DG uh, herself, uh, Excellency Margaret Chen, and also the regional director, Dr. Poonam Ketrapal, has also uh, highlighted in her speeches that the Maldives uh, uh, capacity strengthen even the health professionals within the system and how the Maldives has internationally promoted health services and also locally promoted. So it's two folds uh, uh, locally and internationally that it has strengthened and this has not been seen before and during the recent two years a uh, lot of indicators that you would see that the Maldives uh, health service has actually has a dynamism in itself and you will see that uh, not only in terms of the services but also how it is provided to the people the mechanisms that has been in place uh, the response uh, for any disaster outbreak uh, the health uh, research committee sits down with the WHO and gets the knowledge if there is any uh, virus uh, we immediately get the support from WHO and even get the samples out to uh, various labs and it is tested so this has also improved uh, uh, with regards to the food and drug agency mode, uh, within the health ministry mode, this food and drug agency, it has been noted that uh, even Timor-Leste or countries within a uh, Sierra region, they should take Maldives and, as an example because how it, uh, the food is inspected, how the medicine uh, uh, and consumables are regulated and monitored, that has been appreciated. As regards to the health protection agency, efforts have been undertaken uh, even recently on uh, preventive care but uh, we, we would like to improve that because we feel that rather than uh, uh, focusing on the curative care, it's very important that the Moldovan people or uh, the citizens are healthy and are able to live a healthy life. And we will also uh, ensure that the cost for health care is minimized. As you would see from the recent budget as well as uh, previous com in comparison to other sectors, health budget is a big investment and it's an expenditure. Uh, it's very minimal how you generate uh, revenue from the health sector because it is a basic right and health care provider to the people. Uh, I also would like to note that uh, compared to the 1980s, how health services promoted is different. Uh, that is indicated and uh, various indicators, maternal mortality has improved. Uh, in the 1980s, 1990s, you would see so many uh, maternal deaths, infant mortality uh, increased at uh, various stages. However, in recent years, in the uh, last two years, if you uh, see any statistics, you would see that it is really complementary for, for the service that is delivered in the Maldives. Uh, that's not to say that there, we still recognize there are challenges, areas to be improved, that the in-house uh, Maldivian uh, doctor specialties that has to be developed, and also the health service uh, always have uh, a brain drain uh, in so that people are attracted to other private sectors, overseas jobs. We, we have to ensure that the human resource is retained within the Maldivian health system. So all in all, it has been very successful and within the recent two years, just recent two years, you would see the concentration. Health service has become the hot pot uh, and every ministry or every private company agency you would see that they have been doing something related to health. So the, there is an attraction to the health sector. Uh, I feel that from the feedback that we have been receiving uh, from various atolls, uh, islanders, Moldovan people, and those within the health sector, even the doctors themselves, are happy with the uh, facilities that actually they would have to use to deliver the health service. So this is a good impact, a very positive impact on, on the Moldovan people.
but more importantly, are the people happy? Are they are they satisfied with the healthcare services that they have been provided? The services that uh, have been provided uh, recently, that has been remarked as uh, satisfactory. But uh, of course, we do know that there's always the challenge of monitoring and maintaining. Mm -hmm. uh, a specialist or a physician might be sent, but uh, we would have to continuously monitor that the uh, replacement is sent. And in the same manner, the machinery, consumers, re reagents that has been that the health ministry has been providing to the atolls. That is is also continuously monitored and ensure that uh, the emergency supplies are in place in the actual hospitals and health centers. All this, even in Mali, everything has to be monitored. So people are happy. The responses say, unlike ever before, that people say that the health services that we are getting are is good and they are happy. Tariq, late last year we had we had we heard about uh, the COP21 and it, it made headlines. The Paris Agreement made headlines. What was what was the Maldives' role in COP21? Yeah, um, uh, Maldives played a, um, a, a huge role uh, in, in making a COP, the COP21 a success. Uh, uh, I would like to start uh, f uh, from the beginning of uh, uh, last year, 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, Maldives uh, became the chair of Alliance of Small Island States uh, at the beginning of uh, 2015. Um, Alliance of St Small Island States consists of 44 low-lying uh, islands around the world. And uh, uh, so we speak on one voice uh, to, to make sure that our, our uh, fragile environment and our uh, is kept uh, safe uh, is uh, to make sure that uh, our small islands are kept safe uh, due to the changes of climate change so the main aim, aim of the alliance is to voice out uh, and make sure that our voice are heard uh, at different uh, platforms around the world that uh, around the world um, uh, so during, uh, as you mentioned last year, uh, during de December, late, early December, the COP21 was held in Paris, and one of the main aim on that uh, conference was to uh, the world to come up with a with an agreement, uh, a legal agreement, uh, to uh, agree on on. Uh, platform where the, all the countries agree to limit and reduce the emissions that is uh, uh, t uh, t being taken place on, on the different countries in order to reduce the uh, global temperature so that the climate change is reduced, climate, what's happening, climate change is reduced. So what Maldives, uh, what we played, uh, we. Maldives as a chair, we played a very vital role uh, to make sure that uh, uh, the 44 islands uh, uh, are heard uh, during the whole of last year where, when, when we were preparing the uh, uh, agreement. And uh, some of the important uh, uh, milestones or achievements we made is we, uh, as, uh, as a chair, we, we made, made sure that the um, uh, agreement uh, reflects certain issues. One of the main uh, uh, main point that we wanted to, uh, uh, in fact, all the small island states wanted was to make sure that 1.5 degree global uh, temperature is reflected or stated in the agreement. Initially, the major uh, economies or the developing major developing countries did not want uh, the 1.5 degree to be reflected on the agreement what they wanted was just two degrees uh, to be reflected as a global temperature but uh, we actually fought we we uh, raised our voice and we fought for the to make we fought uh, really hard to make sure that 1.5 degrees is uh, uh, written and then stated as uh, in the agreement so uh, eventually we succeeded uh, everybody heard our voice and more displayed an important role in making sure that this is stated in the agreement. The second uh, 
to point uh, uh, all the islands or small island states uh, wanted is to make sure that loss and damage uh, is uh, reflected in the agreement as a separate uh, point or a separate uh, point so uh, that is uh, initially the major countries the major economists did not want to have it again they wanted to have it as a, a part of uh, adaptation and what we said was adaptation is something that is uh, ongoing that is uh, uh, that is being done even now but uh, loss and damage is something that we need in the event if there is a, a natural disaster or, or if there's a, 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 a disaster happening due to climate change that there are there should be ways of helping the nation's uh, immediate help and, should be available and that should be come from the loss and damage mechanism so eventually that was also uh, agreed upon by all the countries and it was there reflected in the agreement the third uh, uh, point that we wanted to make sure that it it, it is reflected in the agreement is uh, that uh, they, that uh, all the countries to recognize uh, seeds or small island development set as a special circumstances uh, it's vulnerable and it's it has to be recognized as a special circumstances so this was again uh, uh, reflected eventually reflected in the agreement so these are the three major uh, uh, points that we we as alliance of small island states wanted to reflect and initially at the beginning of the year and during during the year most of most part of the year most of the uh, developing country or developed countries and our major economists did not want to be reflected but we managed to do it and and uh, well, i believe that uh, uh, most of the work which was done during the whole of last year uh, we Maldives as the chair of Alliance of Small Island States uh, um, uh, uh, took the leadership uh, uh, to make sure that, that what we wanted as the Alliance of Small Island States uh, was reflected in the agreement. So I think uh, that's a major achievement we, we had. I just would like to also state that uh, uh, Maldives uh, during last year uh, we also had a lot of uh, uh, some of our opposition, especially in Maldives, wanted uh, uh, wanted uh, Maldives uh, uh, to be removed from the chair as alliance of small island states, and they have written to several uh, uh, countries, our alliance, uh, all small countries, uh, asking them that we are we are not able to do our work and we are we, can, we are not showing our leadership. But uh, I think uh, uh, the oppositions are wrong, and we we did uh, what we, we what we were asked to do as a chair, and all this happened because we were taking our uh, advice. Uh, I was taking the advice from President Yamin to make sure that uh, we actually worked very democratically to make sure that of every. Uh, a, a member in the alliance of small island states in world and uh, we make sure that no one no country was left behind during our negotiations and uh, that was uh, i think the major uh, uh, major um, uh, that's why we we were so successful at the end well, of course, it was a huge achievement, especially when it comes to survival. Uh, but can the goals of the Paris Agreement be reached? Is it possible? I think uh, now it's time for us to start working uh, on to make sure the implementation process is. Uh, it's time for us to start. Uh, all the uh, countries should start uh, preparing for the implementation. So uh, the COP22 that will be held this year in Morocco. Here yeah, we'll uh, we'll uh, tr talk about how we are going to start the implementation uh, of what we agreed, and by 2020, I think we should be ready to make sure that our implementation is uh, uh, implementation starts as we agreed. So, I I I am sure now that the. Um, 
most of the countries uh, agree that there are changes happening uh, due to climate change. But Especially in, the yeah, major powers. Yeah, because uh, if you if you look at uh, uh, it's only the small countries that they started talking about climate change way back in uh, uh, 1987. Maldives was uh, one of the first countries to start talking about the effects of climate change, and it was in Ma Maldives in Mali we had the uh, sea level rise conference in 1989 uh, and uh, hosted by uh, by the Maldivian government and uh, headed by the then president president Mamun Abdul Gayum so we were the people we were the frontline states even then for the climate change issues so at that time i think the major uh, the, the developed countries and the um, major economies at that time did not actually believe uh, that the climate change is happening but if you look at now uh, after 25 years uh, it's, there's a major change in thinking and uh, now everybody believes that it's happening and, uh, and science shows that uh, it is happening and uh, if you look at the uh, uh, journal scientific journals last year is the hottest year that was recorded uh, 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 that was recorded uh, ever recorded um, um, can we talk a little about a little bit about the the state of the hospitals and uh, health centers in the atolls are there adequate resources and uh, healthcare personnel in these facilities? And uh, during the past two years, we, we saw a number of renovation and expansion projects, especially targeting the atolls. Yes, uh, thank you. I think uh, for a very long t time, there hasn't been any uh, development in infrastructure uh, of the hospitals or health facilities. And every uh, building was run down on the basic sanitation and. Uh, necessary uh, requirements, hygiene could not be maintained in those old and dairy buildings or very small health halls. The demand for the health service in the atolls and health services has increased. And uh, those, uh, I mean, actually old buildings and also the, the uh, uh, I mean, capacity was not really uh, sufficient for the Maldivians in atolls or islands. So with that, uh, there was uh, last year, there was a lot of work uh, done the by the ministry team, my team, that uh, almost 95% of the infrastructure work was completed, which means about 76 million on the infrastructure alone. So this actually did generate a lot of uh, you know, development in the health sector. Uh, if you're talking about uh, furniture, uh, the ministry signed uh, an agreement with the state trading organization, STO. With their support, we have actually uh, brought furniture for the atolls, uh, which is about 9.1 million rufiah for the islands, because all this furniture, various uh, equipments was actually uh, no longer there or either broken or under repair. So uh, we had to uh, step up these uh, uh, facilities. The, the other, uh, I mean, with regards to the infrastructure, 14 hospitals did, uh, I mean, undergo a renovation, uh, 14 hospitals, and with four hospitals, we were actually continuing the work uh, as we finished last year. With regards to one hospital, we had to also build up a new infrastructure for the hospital, a new building, because uh, uh, the small health post was uh, was really a small post which no, uh, which actually could not even cater for more than 20 people in the island. There was also uh, 68 health uh, centers. The health centers under the health ministry's uh, health policy is graded whether it is 24 hours, 16 hours, or eight hours. So these 68 uh, health centers were actually, uh, uh, I mean, repaired last year, and 15 health centers work is still undertaken and it is ongoing. We also had 22 health centers uh, which actually needed repair 
repair work, which actually uh, was um, for the theater, for the consultation rooms, uh, the various uh, basic necessities within the health center that had to uh, actually undergo a re re repair and maintenance. We also uh, did focus on uh, extending uh, some services, so they had, they had, we had to include some extension facilities, new uh, buildings set up close to the hospitals or health centers because uh, of the new facilities, laboratory or theater or OPD rooms that uh, or the ward was not enough for the people. So these uh, extensions did uh, actually impact on the health sector budget. We did cater for that as well. There was also uh, uh, about uh, nine health centers which uh, we are still uh, you know, having the project ongoing for extension facility. We also did uh, try to work on uh, improving the freshwater plant. I think mm -hmm. as Minister uh, Th uh, Tobe has said, there was a lot of impact on sanitation and water quality. And since Health Protection Agency monitors the quality of water and the MFDA, making sure it is regulated uh, by our authorities in the health ministry, we had actually uh, installed um, uh, one uh, freshwater plant in Ra Ungufa Regional Hospital and in Shavian Fonadu Hospital. These were necessary for that time. And almost 20 uh, incinerators uh, with the support of Environmental Protection Agency specifics were identified and it is under tender processing. This was under the assistance of the Japanese, Japanese government. We also have uh, worked on tendering 10 incinerators uh, from the Maldives uh, government budget, health sector budget. Uh, 34 uh, incinerators are actually projected. We have this need that we should also have this for the hospital waste and management. So um, I think uh, both uh, ministries are working side by side and uh, on a collaboration project so that hospital waste is monitored and maintained in such a standard that it doesn't affect the health of the people. We we have also uh, taken so much uh, work on renovation, I think, uh, but uh, successful projects were completed and uh, people have felt the positive impact. Uh, the theaters are up and running. Dialysis centers in the regional center, uh, regional hospitals, uh, at all hospitals, has been established and it is fully functioning. And there were uh, almost 44 million uh, medical equipments and consumables sent out to the atolls alone. This is uh, without uh, those uh, uh, that has been managed under the IGMH board, IGMH hospital, Hulumale and Vilimale. So this actually is a lot of work that was undertaken even last year. Uh, we could not have done this without the support, the guidance, and also uh, the decisions that President Yamin has made. Very crucial point when uh, the service was necessary or when we had to actually deliver this on an emergency. Uh, during the uh, crisis periods, uh, we also had to seek additional budget from the government so that it will be actually injected to the health sector service delivery. Uh, I, I think uh, that uh, uh, alone was a lot of uh, uh, investments in the health sector, but we had to also uh, undertake work uh, regarding training uh, for uh, health mm -hmm. professionals as well. Tariq, uh, she talked about the sewage and, and clean water supply projects. Mm -hmm. What is the Environment Ministry doing about this? Yeah, um, I just wanted to start uh, when President Yamin uh, came to office, the, what's the state of the water and sewerage uh, sector. Uh, uh, when uh, uh, November uh, 2013, uh, when President Yamin uh, came to office, uh, there were only uh, 30 islands uh, with uh, proper sanitation or sewage facility uh, within the country and there's on, only there were only five islands uh, within the country that there was proper water uh, system or piped water system within the country uh, so after two years if you look at now uh, last two years we have been able to complete ten uh, sewerage 
projects in 10 islands and 10 uh, piped water projects in 10 islands. So this is how fast uh, we are doing the projects. So uh, President Amin is giving uh, special attention to make sure this essential service of water and sewerage system is uh, provided to uh, uh, the islands as much as possible and as fast as possible. And if you look at the current uh, status, uh, uh, at the moment, we have uh, uh, at different stages, uh, we have around uh, 50, we have around uh, more than 50 uh, island, fifty islands uh, sewerage uh, 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 projects is going on at different stages. It's uh, some are at the tendering stage, some are at the design stage, and some are at actually implementation stage. So there are more than 50 islands in this stage where uh, the sewerage projects are uh, happening. And then if you look at the water supply, there are about uh, uh, 47 uh, projects or 47 islands. Uh, the projects are being um, uh, uh, done at different stages. It's in some islands, as I said previously, some islands we are doing the des at design stage, some islands at the tendering, and some islands are at the implementation stage. So we are doing uh, this work quite, uh, uh, our work is very fast, and we hope to uh, complete most of the islands uh, within the next uh, three years and there are more projects that will be coming uh, even uh, this year we will be tendering more projects this year so what I'm uh, uh, saying is that a lot of effort is put in to make sure that uh, uh, water and sewage works are implemented within within Maldives uh, and if you look at the another statistics uh, Maldives uh, uh, we, the, the projects that are being implemented or contracted to MWSA amounts to more than a billion rufia last year. So th this is the amount of work which we are doing. So uh, as far as water and storage uh, systems uh, or the projects that is going on, we are we are trying to deliver uh, at a very fast, fast pace. And and in, during the history of Maldives, this has never happened. So uh, uh, this is all because uh, President Yamin has given a special attention to make sure that uh, our people are. Uh, were, uh, receives uh, proper water and sanitation and apart from that as you know, um, you know due to the change in climate uh, now um, the dry season is getting longer and uh, we have to supply water drinking water to a lot of islands from Mali uh, over the last two or three years we have been supplying water and uh, this is a big uh, uh, it's a very uh, difficult task and a logistical nightmare to supply drinking water from Mali to this island so last year they had to supply about more than 50 islands here to supply water drinking water so one of the main uh, tasks of uh, this government is to make sure that uh, during the next three years Years that we have to uh, supply enough storage to these islands and then uh, make sure that we don't supply drinking water uh, from Mali but have enough uh, uh, rainwater harvesting facility on, on all these islands. So this pledge, we are, we are, it's happening now. We, last year we were able to complete uh, more than 10 islands. Uh, uh, with the adequate rainwater harvesting and storage facility. This year we will be able to finish about more than 20 islands uh, rainwater harvesting facilities and also we have uh, received international funding uh, from uh, Green Climate Fund uh, uh, to uh, construct and provide uh, uh, rainwater harvesting and storage facility. And for, and for, was one of the first countries to yes, receive this. Uh, for 44 islands. And uh, also, as you mentioned, Maldives is one of the first countries to receive uh, GCF or Green Climate Fund uh, uh, assistance. Uh, and from the, from the eight projects, Maldives is the first first one of the first country to receive that. So uh, I think the, there is international recognition recognition of what the work we are doing and the 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 work we
we are doing and how we are delivering. So I think uh, hopefully uh, within the next two, three years, as we have, as the President Yamin has pledged, pledged we will uh, uh, make sure that uh, uh, this pledge is, uh, 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 we, we deliver the pledge to the people. Now, another issue that is faced both by the health sector and the environment sector is is the issue of waste. Mm -hmm. What is the government doing to uh, implement Im implement proper waste management mechanisms ac across the country? Uh, you're right to say. Uh, I mean, uh, one of the main issue, environmental concerns, and environmental issue is uh, uh, providing proper waste management services to all the islands, including Mali. So, um, uh, Mali, uh, uh, it was neglected all these years, uh, especially MDP uh, government really neglected the proper waste management facility, uh, providing proper waste management facility uh, in Mali and in greater Mali area. And if you remember, uh, the, there was a contract given to a company called Tatwa and they never delivered the uh, services and eventually we have to actually uh, terminate the contract and we, we terminated the contract, this government terminated the contract contract just uh, uh, end of last year. Now, uh, uh, the previously uh, 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 previous paper company uh, that was uh, that was uh, um, it was a paper company earlier, uh, which is called Waste Management Corporation, mm -hmm. which they didn't do any work at that time uh, during uh, MDP government. Um, now we are able to be able to have a, a proper uh, management uh, staff and a new board and they have started work uh, to make sure that uh, the, the waste management in Mali, greater Mali area uh, is delivered through them. So government has now given the contract to manage uh, the waste management of Great Mali area and they have started their work. Hopefully uh, uh, the plan is that before the end of the year they will start the waste collection from all the households in Mali and Greater Mali area and also have a proper uh, waste transfer facility and also uh, in Tilafushi they wanted to have, they will have a proper uh, incineration facilities uh, by uh, 2018. So next year they will start uh, the process of construction the waste uh, incineration facility uh, in, in Tilafushi. So this is as far as Mali area is concerned. If you look at the outer islands, uh, the waste management facility is uh, actually much more advanced. Uh, the waste management is at an advanced level. Uh, the islanders, uh, most of the islands in Raba, Laveni, Noon, there's, there's this four islands, four atolls consist of uh, one of the regional waste and consists within the regional waste management area. So uh, there's um, the, the island which was designated as the regional waste management center is Wandu, where we have already installed uh, 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 one of the biggest incinerators uh, in Maldives, 40 tons per day can be incinerated. So what we are doing at the moment is uh, commissioning the system and all the 44 or 45 islands within the region, we have almost, uh, uh, most of the islands we have actually uh, uh, constructed the island waste management center and also uh, we have uh, given training to the uh, uh, councils and other few other people to make sure that the there is uh, uh, the management of the waste management center is done properly, mm -hmm. especially in producing the uh, compost, uh, uh, producing compost within the waste management uh, uh, center, and uh, that is being done almost on almost 44 islands. So our plan next is to have a regional waste, second regional waste management center. And next year or this uh, year? This year we, we will be constructing two more regional waste management center. One uh, that will consist of Hali Fada Al Shaviani mm -hmm. for the, all the islands, and then one at Addu and uh, Addu, and that consists of Addu city and Formula. Okay. And again, uh, we will be also developing a 
Yes, management centers in Gafdal and Gafalif. So this year we will, we will be doing all these projects and uh, hopefully complete the project uh, within the next year. So uh, what our aim is to make sure that uh, every island will uh, to have a waste management center or island waste management center uh, on every island before 2018 and then have a proper waste management uh, collection facility uh, uh, in most of the islands uh, by 2018. So, and then uh, uh, the, the end uh, aim is the, the eventual, uh, what we want, eventually what we want to have is a, a clean and green island, uh, that uh, the, the clean and green island. Um, let's get back to the health sector for a minute. Um, we recently saw the cataract surgery program uh, conducted with the assistance of the Chinese government. Uh, during the past two years, we saw the introduction of land and sea ambulance services, um, land ambulances to where the Vernon or where the ambulances were broken down and damaged. And we also saw the establishment of pharmacies across the country um, in all of the inhabited islands. Uh, what is the health ministry's plan to to ensure that the services are provided in a sustainable manner. Yes, uh, I think uh, under President's, uh, President Yamin's manifesto, uh, President has underlined that there has to be ambulances provided to all uh, atolls, all inhabited islands, and also depending on the number of uh, people, uh, citizens in that uh, island. So uh, we uh, actually, the total figure was 237 ambulances, out of which 53 ambulances was uh, purchased, uh, procured uh, from overseas and brought. Uh, four were paramedic ambulances, but uh, we still had uh, almost 39 land ambulances. Those were in New uh, waiting for re repair in various islands. That was brought and under the assistance of uh, STO we were able to repair the 13 ambulances. Uh, we also uh, have uh, 21 C uh, ambulance, uh, ambulance launches. Mm -hmm. The launches were normal uh, launches that mm -hmm. were uh, you know, used for traveling between islands, but these uh, the engines uh, were actually uh, reinstalled so in such a way that it will be a uh, uh, sea ambulance launch that will actually uh, service the various atolls. Mm -hmm. uh, with the assistance of MNDF uh, last year, we handed over the 21 sea ambulance launches and uh, they have been operated uh, in various at uh, atolls, uh, different points, so that with, uh, with a distance of uh, 45 minutes to any uh, evacuation center, so that the uh, mm -hmm. patient would be evacuated on the necessary mm -hmm. time. In addition, to that, there is also an arrangement uh, between the health ministry, the uh, us and the, and the island aviation, so, such that any immediate or emergency patient will be evacuated by air. Mm -hmm. So if you talk about health services, this is actually connecting land, air, and land, air, and also by sea, by water, irrespective of the t uh, tides, the sea, whether the uh, weather is really bad, we have to evacuate the uh, patient. And irrespective if the health ministry or even the ministry is traveling on such an ambulance or uh, sea transport, we will give the priority to the patient. Uh, with regards uh, to the uh, clinic, uh, we we have also been monitoring uh, the various clinics, but uh, focusing on the pharmacy, this was also another goal that was achieved. Even before the targeted time, with the assistance of SGO uh, under an agreement that was signed between uh, Health Ministry and the SGO, the pharmacies uh, have been opened and this is operated that uh, that will cover uh, us on the um, so these facilities are in place with regards to the various uh, monitoring and regulatory mechanism a lot of work has been done with the support of the parliamentarians mm -hmm. the health professionals and uh, with the assistance of uh, AG attorney general and his team we were able to have two key legislations that was reviewed and president had endorsed and ratified this in September. One is uh, a major legislation health service bill which will provide how you would regulate and provide service or health services, various 
alternative medicine or any medical treatment that has to be regulated. The other key legislation is, of course, professionals. That was also uh, you know, ratified. And under the new uh, professional bill, the medical uh, councils that were in place, the three medical councils that uh, had to be uh, you know, uh, reinstalled, there has to be appointments, uh, selections, and uh, the new uh, members are working in these three medical councils, medical and dental council, allied council, and the nursing council, through which the uh, registration process has been re reviewed. I would also like to bring in that under the regulatory system that we have a responsibility that the food and drug is also regulated by the MF mm -hmm. MFDA, uh, the Maldives Food and Drug Agency. To, uh, we have almost covered 96% of um, medical uh, alternative medicine and clinics, private or public, in Mali alone last year. Uh, we have also outreach uh, to various atolls so that uh, these assessments were conducted by Quality Assurance Division in the ministry so that services, health facilities, how it has been uh, served, how the services has been extended has been also regulated and we have covered almost nine atolls. The thalassemia health screening has been uh, actually installed in addition to Mali. The President's, uh, President Yamin's uh, manifesto goal was to make sure that the service is not only provided in Mali at all, but outside. So now nine atolls has this facility in place, so which is also a successful uh, goal that we have achieved under the health sector. Itusham Thorik, very thank you very much for giving us some time, and I hope to see you again. Sure, thank you. And that concludes our program for this evening. Thank you for watching from me and my team. I am Mohamed Afra and this is Talk Maldives. Good night.